we made some mistakes and why we're taking this big turn. Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel, Canada Immigration. We hope you're doing great. In this video, we will talk about Canada Immigration, a new era, why many are being forced to leave. The landscape of Canadian immigration is undergoing a significant shift as the government acknowledges the challenges within the system. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau recently addressed the nation, shedding light on what he described as a new era for immigration. In his remarks, he candidly explained the systemic issues that have led to growing backlogs, housing shortages, and an unsustainable influx of temporary residents. With new policies on the horizon, many individuals may face the tough reality of leaving Canada. This critical moment marks a turning point for those seeking to build a future in the country. Let's dive into what went wrong and what lies ahead for Canadian immigration. If you are interested in this topic, pay attention and watch the video through to the end to get all the information. Please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to push the notification bell for an upcoming video. So, without any further delay, let's jump into the video. In the last two years, our population has grown really fast, like baby boom fast. And increasingly, bad actors like fake colleges and big chain corporations have been exploiting our immigration system for their own interests. So we're doing something major. We're reducing the numbers of immigrants that will come to Canada for the next three years. Today, I'm gonna to let you in on what happened, where we made some mistakes, and why we're taking this big turn. Canada is undergoing a significant shift in its immigration policies, prompting concerns for thousands of temporary residents. As American workers now earn an average of $22,000 more than their Canadian counterparts, many temporary residents in Canada face the reality of leaving when their permits expire. This video highlights systemic issues and exploitation within Canada's immigration framework, raising questions about the effectiveness of current policies. Temporary residents, a vital yet vulnerable group, Temporary residents, including international students and foreign workers, come to Canada for specific purposes whether to study or fill labor shortages. Many aspire to transition to permanent residency, but only a fraction succeed. For the majority, their stay ends when their visa or work permit expires. Recently, both Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Immigration Minister Mark Miller emphasized that not all temporary residents will achieve permanent status, leaving many with no choice but to return home. Systemic Exploitation and Policy Missteps Over the past two years, Canada's population growth has surged, driven largely by immigration. However, this rapid growth has exposed vulnerabilities. Critics point to the exploitation by bad actors, including fake colleges and large corporations, which use immigration programs to their advantage. Institutions have relied heavily on international students to boost revenues, while some employers have circumvented hiring Canadian workers by tapping into temporary foreign labor. Trudeau acknowledged that his government could have acted more swiftly post-pandemic to regulate immigration influxes. As the economy cooled and labor demands shifted, policies lagged. Consequently, issues like fraudulent asylum claims and system abuse have grown. Temporary residents, desperate to stay, sometimes turn to the asylum system as a last resort. If these claims are deemed invalid, individuals are deported. Prioritizing skilled permanent residents. The government is now focused on welcoming permanent residents with essential skills, particularly in healthcare and construction. This recalibration aims to stabilize population growth, which will effectively pause for the next two years. By 2027, Canada expects population growth to resume at a sustainable pace, aligning with pre-pandemic levels. Trudeau's administration hopes these measures will restore balance and mitigate the strain on housing, jobs, and healthcare systems. The road ahead. Canada's immigration landscape is at a crossroads. With a dual focus on curbing system abuse and prioritizing skilled permanent residents, the government hopes to address the underlying challenges. However, the impact of these changes will take years to materialize. In the meantime, many temporary residents face uncertain futures, reflecting the complexities of balancing economic growth with sustainable immigration practices. Canada Prime Minister explains what went wrong with immigration. Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau explains in a video message about the sweeping reforms to the country's immigration system, aiming to stabilize population growth and address systemic exploitation. Temporary immigration. Temporary residents are people who come to Canada for a limited time, like international students, temporary workers, and so on. They come to work a job or go to school. When the job is done or when they finish their degree, most return home. Some apply to stay as permanent residents, but most return home. So. Back to this year's plan. 
Historically, Canada's annual immigration plan just looked at permanent residents. The number of temporary students and workers that we admitted each year was left to the demands of the economy. It was usually a small proportion of our population, so it's never been a part of the long-term immigration plan. But after the pandemic, our economy came roaring back quickly, and we needed a lot of workers fast. Trudeau outlined the government's decision to reduce both permanent and temporary immigration levels over the next three years and what went wrong with immigration. This bold move seeks to alleviate pressures on housing, infrastructure, and public services while ensuring a fair and efficient immigration system. The context, explosive population growth. Canada's population has experienced rapid growth in recent years, comparable to a baby boom. Much of this expansion has been driven by immigration, including a significant influx of temporary residents such as international students and foreign workers. However, this surge has also exposed vulnerabilities within the immigration system. Trudeau acknowledged that bad actors including fake colleges and exploitative corporations have taken advantage of the system, undermining its integrity. The government's new plan aims to correct these issues while maintaining Canada's commitment to welcoming immigrants. A dual-path immigration system. Trudeau clarified the distinction between permanent and temporary immigration, two key pillars of Canada's immigration framework. Permanent immigration, this includes families and skilled workers who settle in Canada with long-term intentions. Permanent immigration has traditionally been the focal point of annual immigration plans. Temporary immigration, this encompasses individuals who come to Canada for limited periods, such as international students and temporary foreign workers. Historically, this group was governed by economic demand rather than long-term planning. For the first time, the government has included temporary immigration targets in its planning process. This shift enables better preparation for housing and infrastructure needs while addressing labor market demands. What went wrong? Trudeau admitted that the government acted too slowly when post-pandemic labor demands began to cool. The influx of temporary workers, initially essential to economic recovery, created imbalances in housing markets and strained community resources. After two years with closed borders, we need more people, more workers, fast. So we brought in more workers, and it was the right choice. It worked. Our economy grew. Restaurants and stores reopened. Businesses kept running. But most importantly, in spite of lots of economists' predictions, we avoided the worst-case scenario, a recession. But some saw that as an opportunity to profit, to game the system. We've seen way too many large corporations doing this. The government says the program has been used to get around hiring Canadian workers in some instances. Looking back, we could have acted quicker and turned off the taps faster, Trudeau said. Additionally, the system became a target for exploitation. Some corporations bypassed Canadian labor laws to hire cheap foreign labor, while certain educational institutions exploited international students with exorbitant fees and misleading promises of employment and residency opportunities. Key Components of the New Immigration Plan Under the new framework, Canada will reduce the number of new immigrants, both temporary and permanent, over the next three years. The plan emphasizes sustainability and fairness, prioritizing skilled permanent residents, Focus areas include healthcare professionals and construction workers to address critical labor shortages and support infrastructure development. Skilled immigrants already in Canada are encouraged to apply for permanent residency, easing integration challenges, restricting temporary immigration. A cap on international students is already yielding results, with rental prices in major cities beginning to stabilize. Temporary foreign workers will be admitted more selectively, aligning with actual labor market needs. Combating exploitation. The government is cracking down on fraudulent practices by colleges, corporations, and immigration consultants. Reforms will enhance the monitoring and regulation of international student programs and temporary foreign worker initiatives. Asylum System Reform Temporary residents attempting to use the asylum system as a backdoor to permanent residency will face stricter scrutiny. Claims will be processed swiftly, with rejected applicants deported promptly. Economic and Social Impacts the decision to limit immigration levels has sparked mixed reactions across Canada. Business leaders have long called for increased immigration to address labor shortages. For instance, a manufacturing representative stated, We've had a chronic shortage of labor for the last decade. We need more people, not fewer. However, the government argues that curbing immigration temporarily will provide breathing room for communities to build much-needed housing and infrastructure. Trudeau emphasized that this policy is not an anti-immigration stance but a recalibration to ensure long-term sustainability. He pointed out that while population growth will pause for the next two years, 
it will resume gradually in 2027, returning to pre-pandemic growth trajectories. Immediate benefits. Lower housing costs. The cap on international students has already begun reducing rental prices in urban centers. Focus on Canadian workers. The reforms will encourage corporations to invest in domestic talent rather than relying on cheap foreign labor. Fairness and transparency. Stricter regulations will protect vulnerable immigrants and restore public confidence in the system. A path forward. The new immigration plan reflects a delicate balancing act, supporting economic growth, ensuring social stability, and preserving Canada's reputation as a welcoming nation. Trudeau concluded his address by reiterating the government's commitment to creating a fairer system for all. Immigration is a great thing, and we're lucky that so many people dream of coming to our country. But fulfilling that dream depends on having a good job, a decent place to live, and access to health care. As the government implements these changes, Canadians and newcomers alike will be watching closely to see how this transformative policy unfolds. While challenges remain, the new approach offers hope for a more sustainable and equitable immigration system. Frequently asked questions. Why is Canada reducing immigration levels? Canada is temporarily reducing immigration levels to address housing shortages, infrastructure pressures, and systemic exploitation within the immigration system. What is the difference between permanent and temporary immigration? Permanent immigration involves long-term settlement, while temporary immigration includes individuals such as international students and foreign workers who stay for limited periods. How will this impact international students? A cap on international students aims to reduce rental pressures in major cities and ensure educational institutions adhere to stricter standards. When will population growth resume? Population growth is expected to pause for two years and gradually resume in 2027 at a sustainable pace. This transformative shift in Canada's immigration policy sets the stage for a sustainable future while reaffirming the country's commitment to welcoming newcomers under fair and equitable terms. There are the diploma equivalent of puppy mills that are just churning out diplomas. There is fraud and abuse and it needs to end. Because they could charge these students tens of thousands of dollars more for the same degree. And then there are really bad actors who outright exploit people who target vulnerable immigrants with promises of jobs, diplomas, and easy pathways to citizenship, promises that would never come true. Looking back, when the post-pandemic boom cooled and businesses no longer needed the additional labour help, as a federal team, we could have acted quicker and turned off the taps faster. Now, it is time to make the adjustments to stabilise the immigration system that we need and get it working right for Canadians for right now. Immigration is primarily a federal job. We have the levers to rein it in, so we are. This is a big change. A major cut to immigration is reducing permanent immigration levels by at least 20%. A new string of measures to clamp down on temporary immigrants. That means a decrease in international students, temporary foreign workers. Canada's new immigration plan is straightforward. Lower the number of new immigrants coming into Canada, both temporary and permanent. We're prioritizing permanent residents with the skills we need, like healthcare workers for our hospitals and construction workers who will build more homes. And those temporary residents who are already in Canada, some will apply to stay in Canada as permanent residents. Since they're already here, established and working, the added pressure put on communities is very low. Or they'll leave Canada when their temporary residency expires, reducing our population. Some temporary residents may turn to our asylum system when their visa expires as a shortcut to stay in Canada. Those claims will be analyzed and processed, and if their claim fails, they'll be sent home. Between the amount of people coming and going, we'll effectively pause population growth for the next two years. Then from 2027 onwards, it'll balance out and slowly start increasing again at a sustainable pace. In fact, that gets us back to the population growth path we were on before the pandemic. This pause is going to give our economy and our communities the chance to catch up with things like our plan to build millions more homes. That's not stopping, but now we'll have a little more breathing room as we build. We'll see more corporations investing in Canadian workers and youth rather than relying on cheap foreign labour. Our cap on international students is already bringing rental prices down in big cities, and as we keep that cap in place, rents will keep coming down. We're making the system work for Canadians and for newcomers, rather than for the big box stores, chain restaurants, immigration consultants, and sham colleges that exploit it. 
Canada's immigration system is at a crossroads, with the government promising reforms to address its mounting challenges. Prime Minister Trudeau's recent comments signal a recalibration of policies that will inevitably impact countless individuals and families. While some may face the difficult decision to leave, others will navigate an evolving system aimed at prioritizing long-term stability and economic growth. As this new era unfolds, staying informed and prepared will be crucial for anyone pursuing their Canadian dream. That is all for today, in this video. What are your thoughts on this? Please let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching the entire video. Hopefully, the information is useful to you. See you later, in the next video. Till then, take care.